Welcome back to Max Out, everybody. The man to my right, I chased down today because today's show is for me, everybody, and you guys get to listen in because we're going to talk about anti-aging. We're going to talk about living longer. We're going to talk about living better. And the man to my right is the foremost expert, I think, on the spinning earth today in this area. He's a Harvard professor. He's one of Time Magazine's most influential people. He's been knighted in his home country of <laughs> Australia. And he's kind of an unbelievable combination of part scientist, part businessman, and an unbelievable best-selling author, international best-selling author of this book, Lifespan, everybody, that I want you to get, Why We Age and Why We Don't Have To. And that's what we're gonna talk about today is you not having to age and how we can help you with that. So Dr. Sinclair, David, thank you for Call being here. Call me David, thanks Ed, for right. having me here. Going forward, it will be David, so. Please. Thank you. Combined IQ, very high today, guys, and he's holding up 85% of it, so. <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk first off about, because this is heavy note-taking probably for the audience today. I wanna talk first off about aging and how we measure it, because you know, I'm not sure you know, if we're gonna not age or we're gonna reverse our age, there has right. to be a calibration method. And I'm wondering when you do that, is that, is that telomeres? Because I know you talk about the Horvath clock also in your book. Right. How do you measure aging? Well, we, we used to just look at people and you know, that person looks kind of old, that person doesn't. Right. Then we had telomeres, which was all the rage in the 1990s. Actually, telomeres aren't the whole rage anymore. There's a new way of measuring aging and it's this Horvath clock you mentioned. Okay. So the Horvath clock has revolutionized our ability to design ways to slow down and in, in my lab, accelerate aging. We can measure it. I could take your blood today, maybe I should, uh, take some back to my lab and I could measure your actual biological age. So forget about candles, they're irrelevant. I could measure this Horvath clock and I could tell you not just how old you are biologically, but how long you're gonna live and when you're gonna die. When you're gonna die. Yeah, very accurately. It's, it's scary, but this clock actually tells us, I think, about what the process of aging is. Why do we age in the first place? Hmm. So it's not, telomeres is sort of old school now? Is that what you're saying? Well, you know, I, I try not to just be black and white about this, but telomeres is certainly not the whole story of aging anymore. So in general, then we're gonna get very specific. Why do we age? How do we age? Well, the, so this is what's in my book, which is, hmm. I've kept bottled up an idea about aging and I, we studied it for 10 years and kept it secret okay. and it all just flowed out onto the page in the book mm. and we have all this research to back it up. What I'm proposing is that there are lots of different causes of aging. Telomere loss is another, is, is a main one. There's stem cell loss, senescent cells, so zombie cells that accumulate, all these things. We, we actually, as a field, I'm a scientist, mm -hmm. uh, first and foremost, we declared victory over aging about 10 years ago. We said there are eight causes of aging. Hmm. Let's put them in a pie chart. We're done, we know what causes aging. Hmm. And I'm there thinking, that's great, but what causes those things? Right. Is there a unified theory of aging? Okay. And that's what I've got in the book. It's called the information theory of aging. And it can explain, I think, why all of those things happen. So instead of building nine dams or eight dams on eight tributaries, we may be able to go all the way up and stop the main driver of what causes us to get old. Well, so here's the most important take home message is that only 20% of your longevity and how you'll feel when you're 70 and 80 and 90 mm. is genetic. Okay. The rest is in your hands. Wow. Isn't that, ex that's liberating. Yes. I mean, you can sit on the couch, you can eat potato chips, you can mm. uh, not exercise, you can eat whatever you want, mm. but you're minimizing your, your potential. Right. And what we all have in our bodies, what we co-discovered in my lab is that there are genes that control how long we live. We work on these pathways. Mm -hmm. And what we've discovered is they don't just exist, they respond to how we live. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do is trick our bodies into thinking there's adversity, mm -hmm. biological stress, not emotional stress, but biological stress. Okay. So now we understand why does exercise make us healthier and live longer? Why does being hungry make us live longer? Why do all these things, eating good foods, mm -hmm. it's because they're turning on these body defenses, these longevity genes that we work on. Mm -hmm. And that's the revelation. They're in all of us, but we, they become complacent unless we trick our bodies into getting this feeling of, of uh, adversity. Adversity. So it's, we call this hormesis. Okay. Hormesis is what doesn't kill you makes you live longer. And that's the reason you should be running and getting out of breath. That's the reason you should be eating plants that have been stressed themselves. You get the benefits of those molecules that they make for their own benefit. You can alter your lifespan at least a decade by how you live your life, maybe wow. more. Wow. And my father is, is an example of someone who took life by the horns, changed his life, 
He's super fit. He's now 80. He's living life like he was 30 still. He's got no diseases. Is that right? He just put his name on a wait list for a, his dream car. I'm thinking, a wait list? You're optimistic. <laughs> that is awesome. He started a new career. <laughs> really, this is the future for all of us if we look after our bodies and do what we think is the right thing. Love it. Right. Uh, so so that, I think that 10 years is, is 10 at years least, is, a, is at least, at, based on current science, something right. you could be doing. Right. And actually, every four years longer we live, mm. we gain another year just because of the trajectory of the science, how it's going. And we're going to talk about CRISPR a little bit later, where right. we might be able to interrupt heart disease and some other things here going forward that'll just, that'll extend life. To, oh my God, it could be three decades. But, but go ahead, go on rever, uh, resveratrol if you would. So resveratrol is this molecule in red wine that right. is thought to protect the French from high fat foods. Yeah. And we discovered that it activates an enzyme in the body called SIRT1, okay. one of these sirtuin protective enzymes that's activated by hunger and exercise. Okay. So resveratrol we discovered as the first molecule that could mimic a caloric really, calorically restricted diet mm -hmm. and exercise. Mm -hmm. This wasn't an excuse to just sit on the couch and eat pop a pill because we actually found that if you take, if mice took resveratrol and exercised and ate a healthy diet, they lived the longest. Okay. So it's a combination, but you want to keep these enzymes active because as we get older, these defensive enzymes like SIRT1, they go down in their activity. Okay. So there are two ways to keep SIRT1 super active. Okay. Besides living the healthy lifestyle that many of us know about and is in my book, page 302, 303. <laughs> Unbelievable. Jump, jump to the, because some people, they want it, they just right. want the facts. Right, Just right. want the list. Right. Um, but resveratrol is a remarkable molecule because plants make it to survive. Because plants have sirtuin longevity enzymes as well. Okay. But when we ingest that, we get the benefits. Okay. But I haven't been sitting on, uh, on my hands. I've been sure. working on other molecules that seem to have a lot of promise. Okay. And maybe even better than the original discovery. Such as? Well, we call them NAD boosters. Yes. Or NADs, some people call yep. them NADs. So there are two ways to activate these, these protective enzymes. One is the accelerator pedal. Yep. The other is the gas okay. that comes in through here. And it, without either of those, you don't have hyperactive system. Okay. And as we get older, we lose this NAD. Yeah. So it's estimated that by the time you're my age, 50, and you're getting close, yeah, right, right you have about half the levels you did of NAD when you, when you were young, when you okay. were 20. Okay. So of course your defenses against aging are gonna be about half the levels that they were. Mm -hmm. So there are some ways to, to keep your NAD levels relatively high. Okay. One is to exercise, lose your breath, work out. Lose your breath. You, yeah. you said that a couple times. Yeah. So you want to lose your breath. So not walking cardio, lose your breath cardio. Yeah, that's okay. the best way, at okay. least based on the animal studies we've done and some okay. human studies. Okay. And then the second is uh, you want to be hungry at least okay. part of the day. And that'll raise the levels of... What do you mean uh, by that? Like, so, so do you believe in intermittent fasting or do you... I do. You do? I do. We used to restrict calories the whole day yeah. in these, what we call calorie restriction. Mm -hmm. And that was the paradigm for about okay. 70 years, actually. Okay. And then just in the last 10 years, we've realized, hey, you don't need to always be hungry. Okay. You can actually eat a decent meal or two. Okay. But don't eat three meals a day. Don't always snack. Okay. Because being hungry is what turns on these protective enzymes. Mm. Half of the information in our bodies is analog. Okay. And that's the problem. That's why we age. Okay. Because the analog, we have an analog system that reads the DNA. Mm. And over time, it doesn't read the right genes at the right time anymore. Yeah. Okay. And cells, when they don't read the right genes, they don't function well. Mm. So our blood glucose goes up, we get weak, we get diseases. Mm. That's aging. But also, what happens is that the, the cells forget what type of cells they are. Yeah. They despecialize. We call it X differentiation. Mm. Essentially, we become a melange, a collection of cells that for have forgotten what kind of cells they should be. Got you. And that is pretty bad news, right? Yes. If you scratch a DVD, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. We've been looking for the polish on that DVD, and I think we found it. Okay, and it is? Well, we call it reprogramming, okay. genetic or epigenetic reprogramming. And it's a set of genes that we can put into cells or into the eye of a mouse yeah. and reset the age of that animal. Remember that clock that we're, we're yes. going to measure on you? Yes. We call that the epigenetic clock for a good reason because okay. it's, it's actually the analog changes in the cell. Right? Okay. But here's what we can do. We can actually tell the cell, now that you're old and you're not reading the right genes, go back and read the genes the way you should. Okay. It's essentially polishing the DVD. Another way to think of it is we're rebooting the cell. Yes. We've got corrupted software. Screw that. Mm -hmm. Let's restart the, 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 the whole computer. Okay. And you're young again. 
Okay. Right? Erase the hard drive, start again. Wow. But we didn't know that was possible until a year ago. Wow. Wow. That's what's in the book. I was writing the book as we made these discoveries. Wow. Wow. Imagine that. There's a, there's a, a memory of being young in our, all of our bodies that we just have to tell reset. Oh my gosh. And so there, you're, do you mind naming the company that you're involved with that I was reading about that had something to do with the retina or you're doing it, you're working on it specific with eyes. Is that not right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. So it's still in stealth mode. Yeah. This is incredible. But I'll, I'll reveal it to okay. all your listeners Thank for you. the first time. Uh, it's called I, Iduna and it's interesting. The first part of it is eye because we're going to treat glaucoma. Oh my gosh. This is huge. And then Iduna is also the Norse goddess of longevity. <laughs> but here's, here's what we want to do. And I'm an entrepreneur just like you, because I believe not just in making discoveries, but making them practical for people. Mm -hmm. Iduna is planning and working towards uh, treating the loss of vision in, in people. This is unbelievable. But if we can reverse aging in the eye, what, what can't we reverse aging in? So it's early days, but what we've just discovered and we have a scientific paper. If you Google uh, my name, you'll find it. Okay. We were able to reprogram the retina of an old mouse that couldn't see very well anymore to be young again. So the nerves in the back of the eye, they became young and they com these mice completely got their vision back. This is unbelievable. This is one of the, this may, this may be one of the, the most exciting things that we're on the brink of, that you're at the forefront of on the planet right now. And the reason it's important to me, A, it's funny, as I've aged, I had perfect vision, you know, as a baseball player, I'm, I mean, unreal vision. I could read a street sign from miles away, people, I don't know if it's miles away, but far away, and people say, how do you see like this? And now I'm finding, I can't read the street sign from 30 feet away. The, this area where I'm most aware of my aging is in my ability to see, and I have a sister, I haven't told you this, who is, um, um, uh, juvenile diabetes, born without a pancreas oh, yeah. that functioned, and she's gotten to the point where essentially in long stages of her life she's been completely blind and now sees just to some extent. And so do you think that there's even properties eventually with people with, um, I mean, massive retina deterioration you believe is going to be something well, that could uh, be reversible at some point? So I, I don't want to overpromise because sure. it's just a year old and we, we're mm -hmm. making discoveries pretty fast, but it's still in, in animals. Mm -hmm. But, but let's, let's just... Right. suspend sure. all sorts of uh, disbelief right now and talk about what's possible. possible. So what I can tell you is the reason that you and I are losing our vision, the reason we have to do this mm -hmm. at night, is because the, the nerves in the back of our eye are not youthful anymore and they, they're forgetting that they're nerves. Right, as right? we said earlier, yes. And if, if I reprogram your eye just with an injection, mm -hmm. what I think would happen is that you'd get, those nerves would say, oh shit, I gotta, I gotta yep. work well yes. again. That I think we can, we can do. Our nerves in our eye are no different than a mouse's eye, really. Okay. But we did another experiment. We crushed the back of the optic nerve. We really, yeah. like you crush your spine, it's not gonna grow back right. unless you're a baby. Mm -hmm. We reversed the age of those nerves so much that they actually started growing back to the brain even after we killed them. Oh my or gosh. we crushed them. That's, an, oh my gosh. So, that, that so if you can do that in an eye, as you said, yeah. where else could that eventually be applicable in the body is un, you guys. Unbelievable. Now we're not talking a decade. Now we're talking, I mean, we could potentially talking people living extremely long lifespans. So I talk about this in my, in my book also because mm. we can't just solve aging and make people live a decade or more longer without mm. tackling the other problems we have. Mm -hmm. But what I've done is calc the calculations and the rationale comes out that this is the best thing we can do for the planet. Now it sounds crazy, right? That mm -hmm. if we have people living longer, how's that going to help? Well, first of all, it's, it doesn't raise the, the population that much. In fact, yeah. most countries are leveling off anyway. Okay. okay. Even if we stopped aging today, the rate of population growth isn't that much. Yeah. There aren't that many old people that are dying, actually. It's, uh, it's actually less than the rate of immigration right now. Hmm. Yeah. And there are a lot of countries that need help. Japan is losing its population, Europe as well. So there's that. But talk about consumption. We throw away half our food in this country. We've got to fix that first. Sure. Right? But the biggest thing, the big takeaway message is, if we can keep people healthier for longer and just have them die in a matter of months at the end, which is what happens if you live to 100. I understand now. Okay, yeah. I get it. So it's people, centenarians we call them, people who make it over 100, they die quickly, I usually have a heart attack or a kidney mm -hmm. failure. They cost at least one third less than the rest of us. I get it. Let's I get us all there. I just got it. Yeah, okay. that's trillions of dollars saving. We already waste a lot of money on healthcare, yeah. keeping people alive for 10 years in nursing homes. 
Mm. I think we all have a duty to keep ourselves healthy for longer, if mm. not for ourselves, but for our children and our grandkids who have to take care of us mm. for 10 years. This is a revolutionary conversation for me. It's a paradigm shifting conversation because some of the things we've discussed today, everyone want to go back. You have to get this book. You have to get this book. You have to be following this man on social media and you're going to want to get the next one. This is someone that if you want to live better, longer, healthier, you want to stay close to this man because obviously he's going to live for a whole long time and he's at the cutting edge of all of these things we've talked about. I want people to dream for a minute, then I'm gonna go for a question about, I don't have a lot of money and I wanna to begin to live longer, but I wanna to go to one more thing, just because I want people to understand some of the possibilities out there. Talk to them about CRISPR just a little bit, because this is, combined with what you just described, yeah. something that is, you begin to think through all of the technological advances in the world, but in terms of, in terms of this space, we may be entering the, if we want to call it the internet age of anti-aging right now. We may be sitting on our the Apples and the Microsoft concepts, the Googles of anti-aging right now in some of these spaces. And, and these will change people's lives. So tell them about CRISPR just for a second. Yeah, right. So, so we've gone through what we can do today in our daily lives. Right. And there's cutting edge technology that, that I talk about in my book and we just talked mm. about that's coming very soon. Yes. And there's medicines already that you can possibly take. But the future looks incredible. I've already said that even if we don't have these breakthroughs, mm -hmm. every four years we get to live longer, we get another year of life. That's, mm. that's great. But what's coming makes my head spin. And I, I've been at the cutting edge of, of genetics for the last you know, 30 years. And I just can't believe, every morning I wake up so cool. and I pinch myself that we're living in the future already. Mm. But what's coming blows my mind. So in my department at Harvard Medical School, I get to work with people who grow eyes in a dish and people who work on uh, all sorts of futuristic stuff, growing brains in a dish. George Church is one of my good friends and colleagues. He's just, my lab's just on the, the different floor than his in the same building. So he's one of the guys that, uh, women as well, there, mm -hmm. were, there were a team of people that showed that you could actually edit the human genome. This is huge. So we can now read the genome. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of a billion dollars to read your genome, I can do it in my lab for a, a device, with a device that big. Right now. For a hundred bucks. Right. I can do that today. Yes. And soon it'll be in a few hours for mm. less than the cost of a needle. Crazy. That's the crazy stuff. But it gets even crazier when we can actually change the genome. We don't just read it, we write it. Right. And we can change genes, we can put new genes in very easily. There are drugs on the market, most people may not realize, you may not realize that we can now, the FDA approved drugs, we are changing people's genetic disease, we're curing genetic diseases. Yes. Yes. We are living in the future, man. That's crazy. But the future, be, for us is gonna be even crazier because we are just on the cusp of hundreds of companies working on CRISPR yeah. and gene therapy. But what, if there was one thing you asked me that I could give advice, or maybe a few things. Mm -hmm. The first would be eat less often. There are studies that have been done with my colleagues at the National Institute of Health. They gave mice, who have very similar metabolisms to us, uh, very different um, diets. They wanted to know, is it better to eat more meat or to eat more carbohydrate or more fat. Okay. Big debate. Mm. And the result blew me away. Okay. He found that it wasn't better to eat more meat. He found it wasn't better to eat more fat and it wasn't better to eat, better to eat more carbohydrate. Okay. It wasn't what you ate. All those mice lived a normal lifespan. How much you ate. But the often? ones that ate it in a small time of day, two hours a day, lived 20% longer. Wow. So here's wow. the take home message. Wow. If that's right, it's not so much what you eat, it's when you eat that's important. Okay. And so I've gone on a diet where I restrict when I eat. I try not to eat breakfast, try not to eat lunch. That has made me feel a lot, lot better, I'm sharper, hmm. and I think that I'm gonna live longer because of that. Thank you, brother. Man, I, I'm so glad I met you. Let's do one more time, I wanna make sure they know where to follow you. I don't know if I've ever had an interview where I've felt more optimistic and learned more. I certainly learned the most today, that's for sure. But where do they find you? Where do you want them to go find you? you want to see you on Instagram or where should they go? Well, yeah, I'm on all social media. Okay, and where uh, do they find you? What are you under? We'll put it on the screen on YouTube. But yeah, yeah, sure. We have a website called lifespanbook.com. Okay. You can sign up for a newsletter. They also tweet a lot, uh, David A. Sinclair. And Instagram is David Sinclair PhD. Okay, wonderful. David, thank you so much today. I enjoyed this so much. I know you guys did in the audience as well. You gotta share this. You gotta share this. People need to know this information. Mm -hmm.